Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am developer relations engineer David Jones Gilardi, and today we're going to learn how we can upload images into Langflow for processing by agents or LLMs um, for them to do some interesting things with multimodal support. We often get this question. Um, it's like, oh, okay, great. I just I see how I can upload things, or I see that I can use like that chat input and I can upload a file. That's great, but how do I hook my application up to this? and then use Langflow for the image processing. Now, if we go ahead and step back for a second and we look at a particular use case, um, if some of you have followed me before, you might be aware of my CodeBeast app. Um, this is something that's, uh, you know, a fun app that I built a while ago um, that allows you to generate, you know, whether it's action figures or all sorts of different types of beasts based off your GitHub uh, information. Well, there's one little option in here that allows you to actually choose a headshot. So let's go ahead and take a shot, take a look. I'm going to choose an image. I'm going to say david.jpg, and then I'm going to generate. Now, what this does, right, this is actually going to use an LLM to deconstruct the image. It's going to find out what's in the image and pull out details that it's going to then use to generate the beast. So if you notice, Right now, my beard is no longer that red anymore, but the picture I did uh, is, um, you know, he's a little more buff than I am. But uh, but yeah, so it takes features. It's taking features out of the image that I just uploaded. Right. And it is able to then apply them to the end result here in my application. So how might we do that in our own applications? OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at something. Um, and so just a quick setup on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, this is a little utility I wrote. I will provide a link down in the description so you can check it out. It's totally free to use. It's just a helper utility that I find is really useful when I am looking to upload to a new flow. I want to piece everything together. It helps me kind of like see everything I need and then gives me some sample code. So we're going to go through that here in a moment. Now, on the right hand side is just a very, very simple Langflow flow. Um, you can see I've got my chat input component here with my text in my file, right? Because this is where the image is going to come in. Uh, I have uh, OpenAI's GPT-4.1, just a simple LLM, and then an output. And so we're going to use this to ask a simple question based off the image and upload the image and let the LLM process on that. Now, if you're not familiar with Langflow and you're new to this, Langflow is um, a visual IDE that allows you to build out Gen AI and Agentic uh, workflows um, in a low-code, no-code way. Um, it, I, I would say one of the biggest things I like to point out, it's totally model agnostic, vector store agnostic. There is support for all sorts of uh, different model providers and everything, um, fully Agentic and all that. So it makes it very quick and easy to you know, experiment, test, develop, and then eventually hook your applications up to these things and run your production apps. OK, so let's go ahead and get back to it. If you take a look at the left hand side, here's what I'm going to do. So file uploads in Langflow is really a two step process, right? The first step is I need to upload the file into Langflow. Then the second step is that I need to tweak the component that is going to receive that file. Right. In this case, this is going to be my chat input here and it's going to be file. So I want to pass whatever image I upload through the API. I'm going to pass that into my chat input so the LLM can then process it. OK, so let's go ahead and set this up. First thing I need, if you take a look on the left hand side here, is the host. Right um, now, this is defaulted to localhost. I'm not on localhost, though. I'm actually on a deployed length of server. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my host. OK, I'm going to pop that in there. Great. Now the flow ID. Right. So the flow ID is something I can also just grab this right out of the URL or the URL. <laughs> My voice cracked there. OK, right there. I'm just going to grab it out. OK, great. Now, you notice as I'm filling things out here, the values on the right hand side are dynamically being updated. Right. So this will show you which APIs you're using, what the payload looks like, and eventually some example code. Um, now I want to choose uh, or I got to get my component name. That component name is the name of the component we want to tweak. So a little a little tip here. If you click on a component and go to controls, the name is right there, right? So that's the ID of that component. I'm going to put that in. And again, notice that things are updating. You'll see that my payload is being updated. Finally, I want to just ask the question, what's in the image, right? And then I'm going to choose a file. And I'm going to choose that same one that we did a second ago. Now, take a look. So you see that I have my basic payload here um, where 
this is the payload, by the way, if you were to say publish this, you want to hook up to an application or something. I'll go to the JavaScript one. You see this payload, right? So this is the kind of information. This, this is what I would be putting in um, the payload, right? And so it's kind of setting it up for you so it makes it very quick and easy to find out uh, exactly what you need. But notice my chat input, this one here. So again, the name. We have G1 uh, QXJ, right? That's the idea of this. You'll see I'm tweaking that particular component. Um, and then, um, you know, once I, once I submit it, we'll get the path updated and everything. Now, one thing that's kind of key about the setup I have right here is if I submit this, it's going to fail. Why? Um, because I did not actually put the key. Um, I have a secure version of Langflow in this case. So I need to give it an API key. Where do I get that from? So if I go up here in my Langflow and I go to settings, okay showing you my real one. I go to Linkflow API keys. You can see I have a whole set of keys in here, right? Um, so I would just generate a key from one of those. Um, that's where that's going to come from. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my key from some code. Don't worry, I'll delete this later. And now I'm going to put it in here. But notice what happened, right? All of my APIs, all my headers and everything updated with this x-api-key. So this is the way that when I want to pass my Langflow API key, into my call in the case of a secure version here like i have um, then i just need to add that x api key uh, header value and you'll see that in all the calls so if i submit this now now you can see ah it's taking a moment because it's uploading it and then the llm is going to process that as a matter of fact if i go to the playground oh there's the image right and then hopefully in a second um i have to we'll wait for that to come back ah there it goes now you can see this response this image shows a person with a reddish beard, mustache, wearing glasses, and a gray flat cap, right? And if I take a look in the playground, you see that's exactly what we have. So in this case, I was able to upload the file to Langflow with the upload API and then tweak this chat input component with both the text, which is the question I asked, what's in this image, and the file. That is what the playground was, you know, what it, you know, what the LLM in the playground processed on. And then you see the response here. Um, so imagine now I can take that information and that is the type of information I'm feeding in to the models here when I generate, right? When I generate uh, my code beast like this, right? So that just kind of brings that together. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and now that we've seen that real quick, we see that does a thing. Um, I want to take a look at the code down here. Uh, so this little helper app, what it does is it, it you know, whether or not you're no dot, you know, Node.js, Python, if you're doing stuff with curl, you know, it gives you these examples. Um, and really what I want to point out is I mentioned before is a two-step process, right? Um, so if we just break this down, I'm just going to walk through this one real quick. Actually, let me blow this one up just a little bit more so we can read it a little bit better. There we go. OK, um, so the first thing here, at least in Node.js, it's very similar in Python, by the way. Um, you know, I'm just doing um, some basic basic import uh, because I need to read from the file system. Um, you know, this is just really just setting everything up here to read from the file. Notice that it populated uh, this david.jpg. Now, something to point out about these code examples that are in this utility is they are expecting you're going to read from your file locally. Um, what I did here is I actually uploaded the file into my browser and then I read it from the uh, the web app, right? Um, so, you know, this this code is expecting that you're going to have it local, but again, it's just a helper code to get you going that you can read. Um, okay, so great. You see it's going to pull in that file. Again, here is my API key, right? So I need those in my headers. That's really important. And then here's the first call, right? You see that I'm going to get this upload response. And this is really important because when I use the file upload API in Langflow, I'm going to get a response object. And in that object is going to be the path to the file in Langflow. That is then what I'm going to pass to my chat input because I'm uploading the file. I have a location of that file inside of Langflow and I want to give it that path, right? That's what I'm passing to my files tweak here that is what's responsible for making this work right and one other thing i want to point out is notice that when we get the response here right we actually get this upload response object that i was talking about and it has some information in it but in particular what we're after in this case is that file path right so you'll notice that down here in our code when we get our response object we're getting the uploaded path that is getting the file path property just like you see here that 
is what we're passing into our chat component, our chat input component, right? So this is the response. You just pull that path out of there and then pop it right in to your files tweak of the chat input component. Now that I've uploaded it, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've set this up, my payload and everything like that. Um, then I'm going to make the call to the flow itself, right? So I'm uploading it with the files API, and then I'm actually calling the flow, right? This V1 run, I'm, I'm calling this flow. So it's not going to execute that flow. Again, don't forget my API key if I have that. By the way, if you don't, then you just simply don't need to pass it, right? Um, and then I get a response. Now, you might notice this kind of interesting nested response that I have. Um, you know, the payload object that you get out of Langflow, there's a lot in there. I specifically, for this case, all I want to do is get the message text out. That's why I'm doing this, right? But here it is. There, there's a two-step process. Now, why don't we have some fun? Let's bring up Warp. Let's see. I've got so many things. Where's my Warp? Here's my Warp. Let's bring up Warp. My friends at Warp. And I am going to... Let's see. Yeah, don't don't mind my funny naming here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do this one. Yep. And I'm going to wipe out. I had a previous example, but I'm going to wipe that out. I'm going to come over here. Okay. And I am literally just going to paste that in. And then do this. Now, let's see. Okay, remember, I have the file local here, right? That's important. And then I'm going to say node, go. And let's see. And yes, the fact that it's taking a moment, I can tell that it's in fact doing what I want it to do. Uh, and if while we're waiting for that, if I come over here to the playground, I can see it's probably processing on the new, a new one, right? Yep, there it goes. And boom, right. And you can see that it got the response, right? So here we have this nice little code snippet um, that, again, is fully contained for you uh, and works and everything. Same thing with Python and curl that you can just use to kind of get yourself going to hook your application or hook an application um, up to your flow. And with that, hopefully, for those of you who are wondering, how do I upload an image into my LangFlow and process it? This helps to answer that question for you. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, happy coding. Take care.